relations with France and other nations. Recognition was refused by France and the United States and Britain and most of the European powers. Even though many Haitians fought in the American Revolution to help America win her freedom, she would not reciprocate. A crippling embargo was impo imposed by France, England, and the United States, bringing about widespread suffering throughout Haiti. And because of this pressure, when France demanded reparations, imagine that, demanding of the slaves who had fought for their freedom that they pay reparations to their former slave masters of 150 million gold francs in return for, quote, lost property. And Haiti agreed to pay off that debt and kept current with the debt, no matter what the crisis was in Haiti, but the interest kept compounding. So in fact, they never paid it off until 1947, having paid many, many, many times more than the original debt. And so this is the roots of the impoverishment of Haiti today that because of this so-called debt, they were never able to get together the necessary money to develop the country as it needed to be developed. And they never had a strong shepherd to repudiate the debt. To say, how dare you charge us for enslaving us? Next slide. What about relations between Haiti and the United States? It took until 1862 for the United States to actually recognize Haiti as an independent country. The Southerners wouldn't hear of it because they thought that Haiti was a bad example for their slaves, which of course, Haiti was a bad example for their slaves. So it was well into the Civil War before the United States officially recognized Haiti as an independent black republic. The United States invaded Haiti in 1950 because they got a little shaky on debt payments. And so on behalf of the National Bank of New York that held the paper, the U.S. government invaded and uh, held it down until 1933, uh, basically forcing payment of the debt at the point of a bayonet. In 1934, President Roosevelt visited Haiti and fell in love with Haiti and made great promises of what the United States was going to do to further Haitian development. Promises that have yet to be kept. Vice President Nixon visits in 1955. And shortly after that, there's a CIA coup that installs uh, the worst dictator in all of Haitian history, Papa Doc Duvalier. Papa Doc was then followed by his son, Baby Doc, who were then driven into exile uh, where they still reside in France. Aristide became the first popularly elected leader, but he was uh, deposed in 1994. The United States returned Aristide to power in 1994, uh, but on, on the condition that President Aristide disarmed the Haitian military. So he disbanded the Haitian military, and then they imposed UN peacekeepers in Haiti who have been there ever since. And then the U.S. deports the re-elected Aristide, and he's living in exile now in South Africa. And he has been told that if he attempts to return to Haiti, where officially he's still the elected president, he would be killed. And now we have a second U.S. occupation where as many as 20,000 U.S. troops are now occupying Haiti as a part of earthquake relief. Next slide. So this is uh, the, one of the images that we're so used to seeing of the tremendous devastation of this 7.0 earthquake in Haiti. And I can tell you, as someone who has been on the ground there, uh, these images that you see or the video on television do not prepare you for what the reality actually is. 
as you go through uh, the streets of Port-au-Prince, what you will see is one-third of the buildings are like that, totally destroyed, rubble heaps. There's another third that are severely damaged, visibly damaged, and probably will have to be torn down. And then there's another third that looks somewhat intact, but probably on close inspection, you will find that most of those structures also will have to be destroyed. So my unofficial estimate would be that probably 90 or 95 percent of all of the buildings in Port-au-Prince and other parts of Haiti will, will ultimately have to be taken down and replaced. So imagine the city of Chicago or Washington or any city where 90 percent of the buildings become uninhabitable, destroyed. Next slide. See, where does she sleep? Where is her family? Where is her children? Where does she get food from? Where does she take care of her biological needs? What's her future? So the Bible says that when Jesus saw the multitudes, that they were faint, he was moved with compassion. Next slide. Now our lessons gives us the science of these things. What makes rain, hail, snow, and earthquakes? Part of the answer that we have is earthquakes are caused by the Son of Man by experimenting on high explosion. Well, what does that have to do with the earthquake in Haiti? We're going to take a look at a video. And if we're ready with that video, we can play it. I'm, as a matter of fact, I'm going to show you two. The first video uh, doesn't have any sound. And it will appear a little strange to you, and you'll be wondering to yourself, why is he showing us that? But I'll explain as we go along. So the Haiti earthquake and the harp induction magnetometer. That's a technical term. You will now see three images, including the sound of, for January the 10th, 11th, and 12th, based on a time frequency spectrogram. And this is a lot of technical details. You don't necessarily have to pay attention to that. But what you're actually going to be watching is when someone pulled the switch on the earthquake machine on January the 10th. So what you're looking at, this is a magnetometer that's uh, on the campus of the University of Tokyo. And as you're watching this signal, it's moving across. And when it went up right then, that's when, this, that's when the switch was pulled on the earthquake machine. So this is not a smoking gun. This is actually a picture of the gun from a scientific point of view. This is not inferential evidence that maybe somebody did something. No, this is objective evidence of what they did and how they did it. Now, the technical details, we're not going to go into all of that. But suffice it to say, what you're picking up are the ultra-low frequency waves of a, an array of antennas, 360 antennas in Alaska that is managed by the U.S. military and it's called HARP. Okay, can we have the next uh, video, please? HARP stands for Highly Active Auroral Research Program. Highly Active Auroral, as in the Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights is talking about beaming huge amounts of energy into the upper reaches of the stratosphere. Now, um, 
who owns HARP? Yeah, U.S. military, the Air Force. When was the switch pulled? January the 10th. A billion watts of power directed to the subterranean rock under Haiti, heating up the rock. What happens to your pavement in the summertime when it gets real hot? It buckles. It cracks. Well, imagine that on a large scale. What do you call that? An earthquake. The U.S. military began its Haiti earthquake relief effort on January the 11th. The earthquake didn't strike until January the 12th. So why would they start a Haiti earthquake relief effort a day before the earthquake hit unless they knew that the switch had already been pulled? Why would they want to create death and destruction in Haiti? Well, you're a follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. You figure it out. And then, of course, this is the fact of all of that oil that has recently been discovered near Port-au-Prince in that harbor. More oil than is in Venezuela. 